Hello Gecko and Ice Pod fans. Hello members of the Buy Me A Coffee program. We're going to show a lot of kind of behind the scenes special things. And Nanette's joining me. We have a lot planned for this video. It's going to be a bit longer because, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We're showing some shipping of animals. We're showing some collection of babies. We're checking the incubator. We're showing you a new stand that we're building. We're showing you the incubator that we're building as well. Anything else that I missed, Nanette? There's just so much going on right now. <clears throat> I don't now. think so. We were running all over down there today. We were running all over. I'm we kind were. of sweaty. I stink. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Also, we have new animals. We have new animals going, well, right now, and we have new animals coming up in the next month. Make sure you check the Supreme Gecko store page for new animals because they're coming hot and heavy right now. It's going to be crazy. So let's go ahead and show everybody what we were doing today. Busy, busy, busy. Let's roll the tape. So this is the start of our day. We're getting ready for some orders. And the net's catching. What are you catching, the net? Powder orange. So how many orders do we have going out today? Ten. We have 10 orders and we have probably about six isopods and well, actually we've got isopod orders, or seven isopod orders, two animal orders and some food orders. Perfect. Perfect. We'll catch you in just a minute with some animals. Okay. Are you all set with the isopods? Isopods are all caught. Everything's ready here. Now we need to go get animals. Okay. I'll trade you. I'll give you the phone and I'll take the cups and we'll go get some animals. All right. Sounds good. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and we're going to catch the animals. You've got a few Pictus to catch and you've got Scabrum to catch. And I, your cups are all labeled and paper towel there, so it's one, two, three, done. Maybe one, two, three for you with isopods, but I have animals and they're going to get away and they're going to run under a rack and I'm going to have to catch them. So let's go ahead and get them. So I've already caught, um, we have a group that we sold of one, three. I feel like my hat's falling down. Your hat's falling. We fine. caught a group of one, three scabrums, one male, uh, three females. And I caught for the person one extra female. So we're going to cup up the one male separate from the four females and we'll get that going. All right. Well, you got a large cup there for your females. All right. Wally, you coming with the Pictus? I'm coming with the Pictus. It was super easy. You have everything marked and staged in these six quarts so we can grab them and just move them right into the cups. Perfect. All right. So this is the new incubator. This is going to be fun to use because we filled up the other, the old incubator or the existing incubator and I cannot see any of the eggs in there. Nanette and I spent probably about a half hour yesterday putting this together. It's not done by any means, but at least we have the flex slot in here. Uh, we have the shelves out, we put the flux watt in, hooked that up, hook, hooked it up to a thermostat, and it's just about time to check temperature. So, Nanette, I don't know if you can get in here and see some of this. I know this, for everybody viewing this, this is really tough, but it's, it's dark over here, but we'll put some lights in. We'll put a light. Uh, we'll make this uh, for sure work, the uh, light there. I just wanted to check this real quick. I'm showing a temperature right now of 79.9, 78.9. I don't know if you can see that. The heat tape is 100 and, oh, I missed it, 107, I think, 104. So what we'll do is, so we were uh, a little bit lower down there. We're 84 up on top. I don't know if you can read that. We'll have to put in a fan. Once we put in the fan and get the air circulating in here, uh, we'll put the shelves in, but even before that, we'll probably have to drill a hole to put the monitor and the cord in for the uh, flex watt. And then, then I think I'll, we'll be done. So that's uh, for sure this week that we'll be working on this. Let's go take a look at the old incubator. And I know, I know this is tough to see, but this is our existing incubator. Got some uh, uh, hatching supplies up on top. I've had some, I have some hatching supplies over here. I have another corner where we, uh, if we collect eggs, we put them into the bottle caps, but you can see this thing is full. I've got my flashlight because it's a little bit difficult. I need to put in a couple more lights in here, but let's take a look. So I do have one light that goes on automatically. I think I'd like to add a couple more lights. 
but you can see we're full of cave geckos and banded geckos and hemidactylus and pachydactylus and day geckos. This thing is loaded. So all of our eggs are in here, and I'm not going to keep this uh, open for, for too long, but all of our eggs are in here except for leopard geckos, picta, and crusty geckos. We'll check those in just a minute. And gargoyles. And gargoyles. I did come down a little bit earlier, and yesterday I checked, and I think we got two cave geckos, a banded gecko, and a couple of uh, pachydactylus. Like I said, this is impossible to work with right now because there's just so many. But I did, I don't know if you can see that, but we found a little Pachydactylus oreophilus. Cute little guy. So let's go ahead and check those other eggs. We're going to take a look for some crusted geckos, gargoyles, leopards, and picta. So we're not doing very many leopard geckos. Um, I think we have probably about six or eight pairs going. And you can see we've got a couple of eggs here. These should be hatching in the next probably a couple of weeks. I have another set here. And again, not many leopard geckos. In the back a uh, few years ago, we were doing about 500 leopard gecko babies a year. And this is completely different. We're more like doing a hundred uh, period or picta babies a year. So we have our newer eggs over here. Um, just keep pulling these down. You, you can see 730, so we've got a couple of months, month and a half left for these. But we'll pull about 20 eggs every time we pull, and we're pulling about two times a year. Two times a year. Two times a week. <laughs> two times a year will you be you can see that some of these are a little bit drier. I don't worry too much about that because we have the general humidity in the whole box, but I will wet those down the next time I visit these boxes. And then finally a whole nother set that we just collected. Okay, I'll go ahead and put these back. And it's about 80-ish right here in this uh, area, maybe 79. And we'll go ahead and check the other three boxes, I think we have three other boxes of Picta right now going, and then we'll check some crested gecko eggs as well. Okay. okay, I have three other boxes of Picta. These are a little bit older, so we might see some hatches in here. This area right here is in the 76, 77, and I've put the Picta eggs a little bit higher just to get a little bit more heat from them. So this is an old egg here. I tend to not throw away eggs until they're absolutely like four months past their hatch date. So I can tell that this probably won't hatch, so I'll probably pull it today. 623, it's 828, so we're way past. Way past when we should be collecting or hatching eggs. So I'm looking at this one. Come in, Nanette. And no eggs here. It looks like this one right here might be a bad egg, but all these other ones are, all these other eggs are ready to hatch. Let's look at the final box. These were all seven, seven, nineteen, seven, eight, nine, so another month to go with these, those. These are all six, twenty eight, seven, one. So we probably have some hatches in here. I'm kind of afraid to open this. Okay, I see one, two, three, four, five, six babies. So I'm going to, before we startle all these, I see two have moved over to another bin. We're going to close this up, and we're going to come back and collect these and put these away on a different time. But I want to point out, if you can come in one more time real quick. Oops, sorry. This over here, let's see if I can shoo him back in. That one over there is an exceptional, exceptional animal. Beautiful, beautiful animal. So we'll come back in a little bit and we'll put all these away. I kind of know where they're they're at so that I can put them in the right bins. What I do is I collect from our groups over here and then I move them into a tub just for that group so I can identify the parents. Let's check for some uh, crested eggs. So here's our crested gecko eggs. And again, this is about, oh, I don't know, 75, 76 degrees over here. And I have a couple of uh, I have a couple of containers here that the eggs are past due. All of these are ready to hatch from uh, 
oldest to newest on the bottom. I keep the eggs again until they are obvious that they're not going to hatch. And these, I think these are from uh, June, so they're way past hatching date. Let's see if we do have anything. We'll probably go ahead and throw them away after this. Oh my gosh, we had something hatch. Look at that. We have no a way. mushroom. Oh, jeepers. So this is what happens when you extend the time. They, they, they turn into and, mushrooms? They turn into mushrooms, yes. And then they turn into little elves that, that live in your house. So <laughs> they, they get uh, and they get bad like this. So we'll go ahead and throw these away. I'll make a fairy garden. We'll make a fairy garden. And here's one from 6, 7. Again, this is uh, two and a half months past due. It's looking still pretty good. So I'm not going to bother this egg. This might... And it probably will hatch out. It looks so good. I don't know why. Some of them take a little bit longer to hatch, but that's the way it is. Here's a box. This is 628 and 71 for a couple of eggs. Let's go ahead and take a peek at this. We're not going to go through every single egg, but you can see this is drying out a little bit, so I'll have to add some, some moisture in here, but this is a good egg. Don't know about that one. This looks like a good egg, so we'll put it in our bin of th these should be hatching in the next week or so at the most next bin these should be really close to hatching this is this looks like a uh, newer bin that we put on top instead of putting on bottom it looks like a newer egg with older eggs we'd never ever do that but again it looks like we have a bad egg here i'm going to go ahead and pull that we have some eggs and while i'm standing here we have some eggs that are a little bit dry i will go ahead and add just a bit of water. I don't know, Nanette, if you're getting this bottle, mm -hmm. this specimen bottle, but I tried to add just right on the edge there so I don't interfere with the Not eggs too much. Egg. Not on the eggs. Let's check the next box. And these are all from 7-7, seven, seven, so they are ready to hatch, and I see some activity. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and open up and hopefully oh. everything will stay in place. Hopefully you can get that in the net. Looks like we have a couple in shed. Looks like we have a couple of amazing reds here. Looks like somebody might have jumped into a different container. We'll have to check that. But it looks like, yeah. But no, they look great. And the reds are like, look at that one. Beautiful. Okay, we'll go ahead it's and like put these posing. away. Around this time of the year, we have about one to two hatching out, so five is, is a really good number, but we are kind of cranking it up a little bit. We're just kind of going down one more box just to make sure. I do like to open these boxes a little bit once in a while, get some airflow going, and we'll leave the other boxes. We'll go ahead and put these away. We'll have to find Crystal and she can put them away for us. Exactly. Okay, we've seen this rack before in our last video or a couple of videos ago, but I have an empty space and that is against the rules in Supreme Gecko. We cannot have empty spaces in this facility whatsoever, so that space has to be full, filled. So obviously, um, I'm going to put a shelf there and I have the shelf right behind here. Here's one of the shelves. Uh, I'll have six shelves and it'll be three feet long and 72 inches high, so about the same height, and six levels, six shelves. On those six shelves, I'll have six quart containers, but they're really long instead of really wide, and I'll keep babies in there. We've seen videos, I'll post one right here, a link to one of our micro gecko uh, racks, of, of our micro gecko rack, the one that rack that we have. So now we'll have two, and I'll put this rack over here, I'll roll this one out. So unfortunately, we will have a rack in the corner that's immovable. We won't be able to move it out. So there's going to be tons and tons of spiders in, in there that I'll have to worry about. But we have everything ready, the heat tape. Um, we have the vents. Uh, we have the tubs, obviously. So we'll have to cut the tubs, uh, put the heat tape down, assemble the rack, obviously. And then we're ready to roll with uh, we're going to have 30 tubs in here, and we're, in the next month, we're going to need them very badly. So, I always like to plan ahead, you know, it's it's going to be about a month before we start uh, filling up the other micro gecko tank and needing this uh, rack. But, we're that close to that, and 
certainly next year we'll need more and more space. Our uh, baby crust the gecko rack is already filled, so we're going to be, need more space there. And I'm already planning out a couple of areas where we'll, we'll redo a couple of racks to accommodate them as well. But uh, this will probably go in this week still. I'll work on the incubator, the new incubator, and I'll be working on this this week as well. There is no more space in our facility. There's, there's plenty of options. To there is things. no more space in here. We'll find space. So I'm down here feeding about every day, and most of the geckos get a feeding every other day. Uh, crust the geckos all the way through the desert geckos, everything every other day. But some geckos get attention every single day, and that's this row right here. These are the babies, the smallest of the smallest. I'm going to bring them down so that Nanette can get a good picture of these. Okay, I'm just running out of room on my, my cart here, but I hope hopefully you can see these. Let's take a real quick peek. I'm not going to feed right now. I just wanted to give you a look at some of these little teeny tiny geckos. Now this is Coleonyx variegatus. So I'll go through each one of these and feed them some small mealworms and I'll rewater their water dish. You can see that I have part of the hide, part of this container, a little bit moist and most of it dry. Here's another, if I can get this top off, this is another Coleonyx variegatus. It looks like it's a little bit humid in this container, so I'll probably replace some of the wet with some of the dry, and the water dish certainly needs to be cleaned out. But let's take a look at this animal. I'm keeping all of the variegatus separate because the parents look so, I think, so different. So each different hatchling will be in a different container. Here's our viper geckos. Take a peek at them real quick. As Crystal would say, they're chillaxing. She would say, they are so stinking and cute. cute. <laughs> Here's an Oreophilus. This is Pachydaclus Oreophilus. I'm sure that there's one under one of these cups. Looks like I have some poop cleaning to do. And again, they're getting small mealworms, uh, dwarf whites, uh, fruit flies, anything that they'll eat right now every single day. I wanted to show this one right away. This is Pachydaclus McMasteri. And you saw how just gorgeous those Oreophilus are for a Pachydactylus. I don't know if we can zoom in on that this one at all. I'm going to throw it up here, see if we can get some different light on this. They're just so, so beautiful. Okay. And a couple more just super quick here. This is another variegatus. And you can see it's growing pretty nice. This has been in the cup since 821. So it's about a week old. Again, I need to come in here and clean up the food dish and the water dish. And I actually have some bandits that have grown up a little bit and they've already been transferred to the micro stand that we talked about earlier, and another banded gecko, another variegatus, Coleonyx variegatus. So I know this is a lot of work to tend to all of these uh, every single day and the micro rack and all the uh, adult animals, but I wanna keep these separate just because again, those babies, the, especially the bandits are so different We'll keep them straight like this um, so that somebody can pick one of the different adult groups if they're looking for some specific color. I tell you, we have a lot going on at Supreme Gecko and it's going to be getting heavier as we move forward. Lots and lots of things going on, lots of projects. We have uh, coming up here the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas at the end of the year. We're preparing for that as well, but it's also gecko time and it's also isopod time and shipping time. A lot of things going on. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
We'll see you next month.